From NBC News, this is Today. This morning on today's Consumer Smarts, hair loss. Would you like to know if it's going to happen to you? For some of us, too late. As today's consumer correspondent Janice Lieberman explains, a new genetic screening test just might be the answer. Sleek, shiny, even sexy. Bald is beautiful, say many men. But then again, you also know the other camp. Toupees, hair plugs, you name it. Some guys are forever hunting for the latest follicle fix. People care about hair because it's a sign of youth. Hair loss is something that can devastate you socially, professionally. Baldness means business. From pills to potions to surgery, we spend an estimated $3.5 billion every year on baldness cures. But what's the number one reason for baldness? Your genes. This is probably the first direct-to-consumer genetic test available. A new screening test designed specifically for men claims to help predict men's follicle future. Dr. Sharon Keene works for the company selling the test. What HairDX.com does is it helps men in their very earliest phases of hair loss recognize their risk for experiencing androgenetic alopecia. The screening test measures two genetic variants connected to hair loss. The G variant, that those patients have a 60% increased risk for developing advanced pattern hair loss before the age of 40. If you are fortunate and happen to have the A variant, you have an 85% chance that you will never lose your hair. To put your DNA to the test, it'll cost you $149 if you order it yourself, or may cost slightly more if you go through a physician. It's basically just a swab that they put inside their cheek. The test that we're using is a genetic marker, so it shouldn't be misinterpreted as a diagnostic test, but rather a marker of risk. Hair DX hooked up with Dr. Alan Bauman, a hair restoration specialist who provides the test to patients. He tested 47-year-old Manfred Busick, who's balding, and his 20-year-old son Daniel, who wondered if he would eventually lose his hair like his old man. High risk, your variant equals G. Woo! So there's a small <laughs> chance that I might keep my hair. Now Daniel Busick, still young with a full head of hair, knows he's more than likely to lose it. And that's the point of this test. Before your hair starts to go, you can be proactive and explore the multitude of preventative measures. A quick word of caution about the results of the test. Any test that, that hinges on one genetic element uh, may be important and advanced, but we have limited information. The connection between genetics and hair loss still needs more research, says Dr. Sinna. We know um, just the tip of the iceberg about the, the number and types of genes involved, and we don't know much at all about the environmental factors. No matter what, there's great headway, so to speak, taking place. We're entering a field, I think, an exciting new era of personalized genetics and medicine. And when it comes to treating hair loss, the future is bright. The hair restoration field of medicine has exploded. Uh, so we've come light years in a relatively short period of time. For today, Janice Lieberman, NBC News. And the same company that screens for men just began selling a similar one for women. Some important considerations. The hair DX screening test is based on a study of Caucasian populations. Currently, the FDA does not regulate this type of genetic test. So if you're thinking about it, think about it carefully. And remember that further research is needed to determine all the various factors contributing to hair loss. Dr. Michelle Hajani is an assistant professor of clinical dermatology at Columbia University. Good morning, doctor. So, so first of all, a uh, number of men balding, uh, uh, how about women? Uh, it's about equivalent, actually. Mm -hmm. For men, we can say about 20% will have early signs of thinning at the age of 20, about 30% at the age of 30. For women, it's a little bit less, mm -hmm. maybe more like 6 to 10% around the age of 30. So the stuff that works on, on this baldness, what, what do we have out there? Oh, okay. So the only FDA-approved treatments that we know are effective mm -hmm. are Rogaine, which is the brand, and Minoxidil is the generic, uh, Propecia, the brand name, Finasteride is the generic name, although it's only available currently in the brand form. And how, how well do these things work? 
So they actually work quite well. Mm -hmm. Rogaine, there's 2% for women, there's 5% for men. Um, if you use it for about a year, about one third of uh, men and women will notice some increase in hair growth. Um, Propecia works a little bit better. It's only for men, however. Mm -hmm. um, and women, it can cause a specific birth defect if they become pregnant. Um, it works about 50% of men who take Propecia at one year will have hair growth, about two thirds at two years. Are we talking like luxurious hair growth or? Well, you know, it's, the majority will have subtle improvement in their hair. Mm -hmm. There is a small number that will have nice, luxurious hair growth, but you have to start early. And then these shampoos? So the shampoos, um, they don't really grow hair necessarily. They just, they thicken the hair. They, uh, they may coat the hair shaft with something to make it look a little bit more luxurious and mm -hmm. fuller, but they're not actually going to grow hair. All right. And, and cost-wise, how do they compare? So Rogaine costs about $30 a month. It's about uh, $50 for three months. Propecia is about $75 for a month, mm -hmm. a little under $200 for three months, but it's not usually covered by insurance, so okay. it can be quite an expenditure over a year. Or $12.99 for a baseball cap. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Might be more practical. <laughs> Dr. Michelle Hajani, thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up.